Hello, my name is Oliver Picard and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to be doing a bunch of tiny jobs on Jolene. We're going to be doing some wiper blades, HT leads which are spark plug wires. We're going to be replacing the grommets on the spring cans which are like CV boots, like little rubber boots that fit on the end of a 2CV suspension. And also making a new carburetor gasket, main gasket, because that's weepy. And these are all little things that prevent bigger problems. These are all little tiny jobs that are really easy to do at home. And if you're not mechanically inclined, if you've never worked on your car before, these jobs are all jobs that you can do as your first ever working on your car job. That can actually save you a bunch of money later on down the line. Because all these little things look after bigger things. You know, silly things like changing your wiper blades when they need changing means that you won't scratch your windscreen which means you won't need a new windscreen or you won't have to have it professionally polished or anything like that. All these little things really really add up especially on a 57 year old car like this and doing the little teeny tiny preventative maintenance means that you can daily drive it and look and it'll look after you as much as you look after it. So let's get stuck in shall we? right after I finish my coffee. Let's start off with a win, shall we? So the first thing we're going to do is the wiper blades. Now these are the old style wiper blades and they use a screw. Unfortunately the old style wiper blades and the newer style wiper blades aren't cross compatible. You can't put two CV6 wiper blades on an older two CV and of course Jolene being an AZA and being in 1963, she's the first year with electric windscreen wipers from the factory. They were available as an aftermarket option, but the 63 is the first year that actually had them as standard. Now, you can see these black ones that are painted, the pivot rusts away the arm and then makes the hole bigger. And what tends to happen is, way before the rubber gets damaged, they tend to bend and then you get a patch on your windscreen that doesn't wipe properly. Not good. I understand why the previous owner put these on because the original wiper arms for this car were black, but because being an AZA, that's what she came from the factory with. These are chrome and stainless steel ones from a van, a later van, and I put these on. So I've gone with chromey stainless steel, wiper blades and oddly enough these are made by a company called Dogger and they are hideously expensive They're like 16 90 something each but you can tell this pivot's all all slack and baggy and the hole's huge and these are much tighter which is a lot better put these on like this like I said there you go, nice and snug. 2CV older arms are not cross compatible with the later 2CV6 wiper blades. So if you have the older arms, make sure that you get the proper blades. And they do two qualities as usual. They do the really naff quality and they do the hideously expensive ones. And I don't see a, I don't see a point in getting the uh, cheap ones unless you don't drive your car. But if you actually want to drive your car and use your car, I suggest always getting the best quality. Because usually the cheap ones are a false economy. There we go. Pop it off. Stand it up. Get our new one. I've ordered these from Sepere, which is a uh, otherwise known as De Franzon, which is a uh, there's one in Germany and one in France. And I like them because they're very open and honest about the quality of uh, the parts. They'll so stock some stuff that if you can't get it in any other way, it's a cheaper version and they'll be very honest about the fact that it's a cheaper version and I like that. So you know what you're getting, which when you're ordering online, is uh, it's handy and I'm not getting a discount from them or anything 
They're just who I've ordered the, the parts off. I was once contacted by a, a guy who works at a different 2CV parts place and he asked me why I don't use their parts. To which I replied, you don't make parts for all the 2CVs. And he's like, I know, but I just wondered why you didn't use them. I'm like, well, because you don't sell bits for it. <laughs> he got really upset with me. But all the 2CV parts are gen generally much more expensive even though all the 2CVs are slightly better quality in uh, a lot of aspects. I'm going to put these screws back in actually. Because I Save would. these. Just in case. Because you never know. There's a bunch of 2CV parts places out there. Some sell better quality stuff than others. Some are very expensive. And the quality of the parts isn't mega. Some have really terrible customer service and some just don't do parts for all the two CVs. And so, because we have in the family, we have my parents, Diane, and we have our older two CV, we tend to use Defranzo simply because we can get all our parts from one place. Well, like I say, they haven't given me a, they haven't given me a, a discount or anything like that or a free bits for saying this, they've just, good customer service and that's what you what we use because I know in the comments like 16 people are going to ask where I get 2CV bits from so now you know right next thing I think we'll do the HT leads we'll build up to doing the spring can bits because that'll be a lot of lying on the floor now I replaced my HT leads not long ago and I wasn't happy with the quality of the parts this, this is that thing again when I bought <laughs> when I bought Jolene, she had HT leads on from the 1960s, possibly 70s, but they were the red 2CV leads that almost every 2CV came with, so it's hard to tell. And I replaced them with some black units that uh, I'm not a big fan of, actually. Yeah, they're a bit uh, a bit naff quality these, I've never been happy with them. And they're made in Italy, and they say on the side um, Brekav, made in Italy by Italians. A bit nationalistic, aren't right, it? So, these are going. I'll keep them for an emergency, but like I said, at the time I bought them because I needed some short ignition leads. So Americans call them ignition leads, we call them HT leads, high tension lines, but uh, yeah. And these are proper 2CV. I'll show you the difference. These are all floppy and these are a much stiffer core and much thicker core and they're a lot shorter. Now on a in, on an engine you want the shortest HT leads that you possibly can have and the reason for that is the longer a high voltage current travels down a wire it gets voltage loss so a longer wire will give you a weaker spark at the other side so for efficiency's sake you want the shortest you can and of course we've only got a 6 volt ignition so we will need the shortest ones we possibly can and like I said these are a much thicker wire and it's much better quality. These are a bit, a bit weedy. And being a 2CV, you have a long one and a short one for reasons <laughs> that I'm not quite sure of, but you do. Right, so the short one goes on this side. Uh, a bit tight because the new. There we go. The 
are much better though, much nicer. And this one goes in here, over here. Up to there. Okay, so while we're here, I'm just going to answer a couple of questions that I get asked all the time. Because if I don't answer them here, they'll be down in the comments. So, this frame that lifts up is because Jolene is a 1963 AZA ENAC 2CV. That's her full name. Basically, 63. So she's the last year of, well, last two years of the suicide doors for 63 and 64. And she's the first year of electric windscreen wipers and the bigger 18 horsepower engine. So she can go on the motorway, which is awesome. But for those years, you also had an optional extra of the ENAC kit. And the ENAC kit was a dealer fitted option, which involves a hatchback, a boot floor that covers over the um, spare tire well, and a folding back seat, as well as this frame here. And the idea of it is because the 2CV is the French Land Rover, it could be a van during the week, and then on Sunday it could be a car that takes you to church or wherever you want to go. So you didn't need to drive around in a van all week. It was the best of both. It was a mix, or mixed. And that was the model name, the 2CV AZA Mixed. The reason why people refer to them as an ENAC is because ENAC was the company that made the kit, who later made the Mahari. So there you go. The reason I run a Cairn air filter is because the factory air filter is like a, a metal tub. I've got one upstairs as well, on the engine over there. In fact, I can show you. The factory air filter looks like this. And it does a really good job. This isn't the one from this engine. That's upstairs in a box somewhere wrapped in brown paper. This is from my spare engine. And inside it, there is a cork and metal washable filter. So it's a lifetime filter, they're brilliant. So all you have to do when you service your car is wash your oil filter out. They're a bit restrictive, but that doesn't matter. They're superb. And they last, in theory, forever. Unfortunately, my car didn't come with a washable filter. It came with no filter at all. And the filters that you can get, the replacement filters, look like this. Now, this is a bigger version for a Diane, but it's basically the same filter. And it's a disposable filter. It's a paper element filter with two big neoprene gaskets and all this metal. And I find this really upsetting because they took the thing that was a reusable, eco-friendly thing. You know, you just wash your air filter out. It's a superb idea. And then you put it back in your car. And the replacement ones are disposable. And it's just a waste. Whereas this KN filter is forever, basically. It is a washable filter, just like the original 2CV one. And it might cause a little bit less restriction, but it's almost negligible. I mean, it's an 18 horsepower engine. So what, what are you gonna get an 18 and a half horsepower engine? That's not really the reason why I fit it. The reason I fit it is it's out the way of the uh, ENAC frame. It makes the engine real easy to work on and it is forever it's re it's washable i don't have to replace it and this little guy here that's the other question i get all the time is an engine breather filter so rather than just venting it to the atmosphere like a lot of 2cv owners do I've, this is turned into a catch can with a stainless steel scrubby inside it and this is uh this is to catch any leftover oil mist and the idea is the stainless steel scrubby catches any oil mist that comes out of the crankcase so then it can drip back into the engine and this catches anything that's left but it's basically just a little air filter and uh, that's because i can't pipe it back into the intake again so yeah i don't like these like i said this is for a diane and uh i'm not a big fan of them because it's it, to me it feels really wasteful to throw all that away i prefer a washable filter like the 2cv came from came from came with from factory and this isn't anything fancy, it's just a universal motorcycle washable can filter. But I think it's much more in keeping with the original ethos of the 2CV of being able to 
kind of service it at home and not throw a big filter away every single time. You know, we have enough plastic in the world, we have enough problems, we have enough things that we throw away. It's nice to have something that you can keep that's shiny and pretty and in keeping with the ethos. But it's just a universal one. So if you want one, I ordered one that was slightly too big um, and had to make a shim. So I won't tell you what model I'm using, but simply measure your carburetor orifice and uh, order the right size one for you. And they are adjustable, so don't worry about it. But yeah, I've also got a fuel filter because Jolin didn't come with a fuel filter and modern ethanol safe hoses. And I also use Iridium uh, BR7HIX spark plugs, I think that's what they are. Uh, BR7 HIX 7067 spark plugs and that is again just because on a 12 volt car your ignition is 9 volts it's not 12 volts because the second you cranked your engine a bit in the morning and that voltage dropped down a little bit your car wouldn't start whereas on a 6 volt car the ignition is actually 6 volts so to make the most of that 6 volt ignition and the uh, not very high compression rate on these old engines i use the most efficient spark plug that i can and get the best possible spark and now we've got new ht leads we really will get the best pos possible spark because those old italian ones yeah, i wasn't very happy with them but they were a lot better than original spark plug wires and i go to shows and see a lot of people with old spark plug wires and they're like oh it's still got the original spark plug wires Spark plug wires over time corrode and deteriorate inside because of the high current that goes through them and also the copper wire inside both age and work hardens so with vibration and years they become less and less and less conductive and your car runs less and less and less well. So if you've still got the old red ones on it's time to swap them and uh, yeah you can get really good quality ones like these. So. Right, on to the next job. I might just put a cable tie there and hold it up and away. Oh, and these wires here are for my fog lights. The, the white, because that's the wire that I had at the time. <laughs> right, cable tie. You have to be really careful with two CVs and the hot exhaust and wires because if the wire touches, if the HT lead touches the exhaust, it'll melt to it you'll get a misfire while you're out on a drive so the engine will like stutter. You'll go to remove the HT lead from the exhaust and it gives you a nasty shock if you don't forget to turn your engine off. So just make sure it's up and out the way and make sure you cut your cable ties off so they're not sharp because the last thing you want to do is slash your finger open or your hand absentmindedly. Always cut them off as tightly as you can and remove them out the way like that. For our next job, because we're in here, we're going to make a new carburetor gasket. Now, around my carburetor, I've noticed some yellowing. And that is from fuel that has weeped through the gasket. The reason for this is I had a sticky needle valve and I swapped my needle valve, but didn't change my gasket. Always change your gasket. If you open up a carburetor or anything on your engine, put a new gasket on. But at the time, I was in a rush to go somewhere and the car wouldn't idle properly so I swapped uh, the needle valve and I just popped the car back together unfortunately it's now a bit weepy it's not dangerous but I'm going to sort it out anyway before it is dangerous because obviously fuel above a hot exhaust not the best idea I'm just going to my exhaust is cold the engine hasn't run always make sure your engine's cold when you do this because obviously this bowl here is full of fuel. And so the last thing that you want is to spill fuel onto hot exhaust. And you can see the yellowing around here, look, as it's just weeped through. And I haven't bought a new gasket, we're gonna make one. because it's a good skill to learn. And this down here. Like that. Right, and in here is, now you can see why I told you to do it with the exhaust cold. In here is our gasket. 
there. This is the float. And in here is the needle valve. Now this is a, an old needle valve. The, the replacements, I think, are a little bit too big. And the, I let a little bit too much through at the time. And I've had much better running with an older one on. But eventually they do wear out. So I don't know what I'm going to do when it does wear out. And that's the same size needle valve as a 2CV6. They are cross compatible. But it's this gasket that we need to replace today. And you can actually see how, see how all this is light colored and nice. And then this is dark here. That's where it's been leaking all the way through. So we're going to make a new one of these. If you buy a brand new one, this cutout here for the float is never quite right. And the float has a tendency to catch on the gasket. So even if you buy a new one, you might have to trim it up. And the float level on an older 2CV valve, there is no measurement for it. Every single person I've talked to just says, fiddle with it until it's right. In which case, you'll have to replace the gasket. So if you need to adjust your float level, or you have a sticky needle valve, you're going to need to make one of these. Right, this is a really simple job. All you need is your original gasket. Now, I have a tendency to keep original gaskets. I have an envelope that I put them all in. I keep them all nice and flat. And if ever I need a template for a gasket, I can actually usually make one without removing it. But for the sake of this video, I need to replace it anyway. So I have removed it. So I'm going to be using this as our template. We have a craft knife. We have a pencil that I'm going to sharpen in a second because it needs to be really sharp because it needs to be perfect and some gasket paper. Modern gasket paper isn't made out of asbestos. All really old fashioned stuff is. This old fashioned stuff is fantastic, but like I can say it's made of asbestos. So be careful with old gaskets. This is why you need a sharp pencil because you need to get right into that edge. Otherwise, if you make a copy of a copy of a copy of a gasket, there is a tendency every time you draw around that line to make the hole slightly smaller. So it's always better if you've got your original. I can't find my original, unfortunately. But you really pays to make sure that you're not making your holes in your gasket smaller each time. Because obviously if you draw around the inside of a circle, then you cut that out, then it's going to be smaller. But obviously this is a really simple gasket, so it's a really easy one to make. There are people who suggest the hack if you have a complete gasket failure of using cereal box cardboard as gasket paper and it can actually work but obviously cereal box cardboard absorbs moisture so it's not something I would suggest but in a pinch if you're out in the middle of I don't know the African savannah and you need a 2CV carb gasket now and all you've got is I don't know what a muesli box you can actually do it. it doesn't have to be a cereal box it can be you know Yorkshire tea or something like that <laughs> other cardboard boxes are available but like I say I don't suggest it don't be making cereal box cardboard carburetor gaskets and say that I'll ever told you to because I didn't I'm telling you it's a bad idea but it's better than nothing and if you reel in a pinch many gaskets can be made but it's nothing is as good as proper gasket paper and in your toolbox in your boot of your car which you should all have you should all carry even in Pandora. By the way, Pandora is all stripped apart at the minute because she's getting welded. We are in the process of the big weld and it takes time and stuff. So I haven't been filming it just because it's really laborious. There's lots of cleaning of welding rods, lots of cleaning of tubes and lots of welding. So that's taking place at the minute. We're doing it in sections so that we don't get any distortion. And of course, cooling it down with an airline and all that. But even in Pandora, I will carry a toolbox, tool bag, 
whatever, toolkit. Because I've always carried a tool bag in every single car I've had, and it's always come in extremely handy. So yeah, if you buy some gasket paper and keep it in your tool bag in your car, then uh, you won't need to use a piece of Yorkshire tea box or Alpen box or whatever the heck cardboard box you can use proper gaskets. Blow me nose. Ow! <laughs> that vice jumped out of nowhere. <laughs> My poor kidney. Right, and keep these little bits because you never know when you'll need a teeny tiny washer. Always keep your tiny bits because they always come in handy. You'll always need a little tiny gasket for something. And yes, this is my kitchen chopping board. <laughs> and actually, you can see I need to chop a little bit more out of here. It always pays to check. Now, there's a trick to cutting out the teeny tiny little circles. Now, you can buy a set of punches that look like that. This is obviously a one inch punch. And you pop it on, smack it with a hammer, and it leaves a perfectly round hole. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And if you have a full set of punches, that's wonderful. But if you don't have a set of punches, and all you've got is a craft knife, there is a trick to it. Because a craft knife only ever wants to cut straight lines. They are designed for cutting straight lines. So they don't want to cut round circles. And the way to do it is just to make loads of little pinpricks in a circle. And just push the knife all the way through. So you get your knife and you just push it in all the way around. I'll do it like that so the camera can see. Push it in all the way around, all the way around and just work your way around. It might take a couple of passes. And then eventually you just be able to get it out like that and it will give you a much rounder hole than trying to cut a round hole will. Just to prove to you, look how small the hole is next to the blade. In fact, look how small it is next to my finger. Because <laughs> I have big old hands. And so you can actually cut a smaller hole the length of the blade. The camera is in my face. And I'm trying to make the carburetor gasket and it's really hard to see. Yeah? It's always funny to me how things sound in other languages because you might not know this if you're new to the channel but I sp I'm trilingual. I speak English, French and Spanish. Although my French isn't my strongest language, it's getting better. Uh, but I can't spell in either of the languages, as you'll know if you follow me on social media. I can't spell in any language, but I can. I'm dyslexic in all three, but I can speak English, French and Spanish. And I always think it's funny how different things sound in different languages. For, in for example, Maserati Quattro Porte in Italian sounds loads nicer than Ford Granada Four Door. You know what I mean? And Quattro Porte is just four doors. It means exactly the same thing, but it sounds so much nicer. My favourite word in Spanish is pantuflas, uh, which is slippers. And if you speak another language, or if you speak a bit of another language, tell me what your favourite word is in another language down below. Or, if you're not a native English speaker, because I know we have quite a few of those that watch this channel, tell me what your favourite word is in English. Uh, for no other reason than it's fun to say. It's like uh, Jolene being the de chavo sounds really nice and really kind of romantic and lovely. But if Jolene had been made in Yorkshire, she'd be called the two horses. <laughs> Which is rather less romantic. If you just want to make sure you holes are just perfectly round if you get a drill bit of exactly the same size this is why it's worth having a full drill bit set with kind of half sizes and stuff like that you can just pop a tiny drill bit just by hand not with a drill on it 
just through and just make sure there's no little ragged edges and it just makes it perfect. Right. Now, we pop our carburetor gasket back on. So that fits through that hole like that. And we are perfect. Pop everything back together. Loosen it. So, I, as I said in my previous 2CV6 Diane carburetor rebuild video, which is, there's a, a link to it above. Make sure you don't over tighten your carburetor casing. It's one of the most common things. And it's really easy to just whack it super tight, but what you'll actually do is bend the top of the uh, casing. Yay! Right. That's the under the bonnet stuff sorted. Now we need to replace these. These little rubber combs here, over time, dry rot and uh, fall apart. So today what we're going to do is we're going to replace these. So it, we need to jack the car up, take the weight off the uh, knife edges, disconnect that, we'll put some tape along here and replace these. That's what they look like when they're not 50 years old. So. We've got four of course, because we've got two for this side, two for that side. We match, so I have to do this side and then move the car over because there's a Honda engine on that side. So ideally before doing this job, I would have degreased the underneath of the car so that I don't get all black and mucky. But I haven't done, so yeah. Um, I advise doing, but I haven't done. So, this is as, as mucky as the underneath of my car gets though. I try and keep it as clean as I can. In a previous video, I showed you how to adjust your 2CV suspension. Now, in that video, I didn't use a jack stand and a bunch of people freaked out. I didn't use a jack stand because I wasn't under the car, nor was I removing a wheel. I was just adjusting what was already there. So even if the jack slipped, the car would have only dropped that much. However, I am going to be removing this rod end. So, I will be using a jack stand because the car won't be supported by its own suspension. Let's remove that pin. I have some kitchen roll on standby because this is going to get gooey. And oh, these never come out as you think they will. I don't want you to go that way. Obviously. There you go, two pins out. There we go. Really difficult to get out and I can inspect them. And they are like brand new there you go all those people that say to me me using a grease gun to squirt grease up into the knife edges my year round driven 2cv that has never had new knife edges since i bought it i literally these knife edges were installed by the previous owner and all the people who said when i do my uh, mini service video or oh, going around with a little grease gun and squirting grease into them like that if you do it often enough, it keeps your knife edges like new. Like new. There you go. The reason why I'm putting white insulation tape on is so that you can see it. But also so it doesn't get confused with this mark here. Because that piece of masking tape is my suspension ride height adjusting piece of masking tape. Which has been on there since the last video I did suspension adjustment. It's funny. One of my mum's earliest memories is my great-grandfather being shouted at for working on his sports car in his nice shirts. Not much has changed. Three generations later, 
and I'm still getting told off for working on cars in my nice white t-shirt. And I'm going to clean all of this up now because I don't like working in a mess. But we can pop up these knackered pieces off. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to... One, two, off. There we go. So get rid of them. And then we can clean ourselves up and we can put some uh, new ones on. If you don't have long arms like Mr. Tickle, like I do, then please, if you're gonna put your head under a car, always put safety glasses on because there's always a bit of something that invariably falls down and into your eye. It's like, it, it's like heat seeking. It just knows where eyes are. And every time I've gone under a car without a set of uh, safety glasses on, I've regretted it. How thick a 2CV4? That's how thick a 2CV4 is. <laughs> It's not flimsy, it's super legera. That's another one. Things that sound good in other languages. Super legera, super light. But in Italian, it sounds sexy, so we say it anyway. The reason I'm using WD-40 is because WD-40 is a degreaser. And uh, WD-40 doesn't get along with rubber. They actually do a special WD-40 now that does get along with rubber. But if you go on a, a cycling mechanics forum and suggest that someone use WD-40 in conjunction with anything even remotely related to rubber or grease, they'll freak out. And the reason is, it's actually degreaser with a bit of oil in it. Nuna, I'm not going to um, lubricate my spring cans today. I can do that on another day. I can just pop the grommet off, pop the tube down and lubricate them up. Because it's quite a time consuming job is this. Um, obviously I'm filming it so that takes a little bit longer. But uh, you can use castor oil to lubricate your spring cans. That's the uh, general consensus anyway. What most people use. Yeah, they do do kits. It's a squidgy can and a long tube, but a bit of funnel and uh, some aquarium tubing. And some castor oil does just as good a job. Right, there we go. Pop him on there. They've got little, uh, I'll show you. they've got little. They've got little teeth, look. They've got little teeth inside that grab the threads. They're not actually threaded. And these are apparently the premium quality ones. Now, I've just piped a load of grease in the end there. So that, when I screw it on... So when I screw it on, It'll fill this bit full of grease. So that'll hopefully save me a lot of work. I'll call that like that. And now I'm going to get a paintbrush with grease and I'm going to fill that full. Even before I put my knife edge in. And just like doing the uh, wheel bearings, the right amount of grease is too much grease. This is the fiddly bit, always. getting it back on. Of course everything is now slippy because it's covered in grease. Ugh. It's a really fiddly job. Alright now I'm gonna get my grease, my little grease tube and I'm gonna fill it full of grease again. Now, I'm going to wipe my hands, and I'm actually going to wipe all this mess off. Just the outside stuff. Just so that I can make sure in the future I can visually check that nothing's damaged. The 
people who keep asking what's on my mezzanine storage and a generator and a compressor it's not a generator don't forget to remove the axle stand yes out of the way I'm just going to before I completely put it down I'm going to check my wheel nuts as well it's amazing how many people don't check the wheel nuts and two to go. When I, uh, when I put the rod ends back on and everything, I've measured it all up. So, possibly for the first time ever, the suspension will be almost identical on one side to the other, or the same, as close as I can get it anyway. Differences in slightly where the car's parked and stuff, but it should be the same. Because up until now, it was completely wrong when I bought the car. So up until now, it's been kind of the best as I can get it on a gravel car park, which is in front of my house. Whereas now I actually have a concrete floor and a levelish surface from which to measure from. So we're going to endeavour to get it absolutely spot on. I got it as near as I could, but not like millimetrically. And I'd like to get it within a millimetre. It's self-leveling, so it doesn't really care what you do to it. <laughs> but it uh, it would be nice to have it. Like riding as good as I can have it. No point in doing all this work if uh, if I'm not going to do everything that I can to make it as good as I can. It's the So this, this pin, if you don't know, this is called a knife edge. Sorry, if you've never seen 2CV suspension, I should have shown this off better. But and then a 2CV suspension entirely works around this pin. And this pin is the only thing that's kind of holding your suspension together, really. And it fits in with two split pins, one on one side and one on the other. That's it. Like, really, it's a pin and two split pins holding you on the road. But it works really, really well. I should have shown that off. I, I just assume that people know, and I shouldn't. Click. Absolutely, millimetrically, perfect. It only took four goals.
Right, so we've now got a really good baseline because all the suspension is now, for the first time ever, it's been set up in a garage with a solid floor and not in a gravel car park. So that's amazing. Hopefully, it, even though it's a little bit higher than it was, it'll ride really, really nicely. And we've got some new windscreen wiper blades and a new carburetor gasket and some new HT leads and some new um, spring can grommet things that are much better than these. So that's amazing. And I'd noticed before that she sounds really, really sweet. Turn it on. Pull the thing. Oh, what's that? Most modern cars don't start that well. It's amazing the difference that just some new HT leads and so any new carburetor gasket can make. Wonderful, she started well before, but now she's. She sounds really well. So I'm really, really happy. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to support this channel, the best way you can do that is by clicking subscribe. 69%, over 69% of people who watch these videos are not subscribed. So, if you want to really help out around here, the best thing that you can do is subscribe. For what? Leave a comment. Or click like on your way down to the comments and subscribe it. That'd, that'd just be amazing. So thank you very much for watching. Please be awesome to each other. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.